Welcome to Picture Healer channel. Today we want to talk about fortune telling with I Ching. We talk about the I Ching as a divination tool before. If you are not familiar with I Ching, basically there are 64 hexagrams and each hexagram is composed of two parts, the upper gua and the lower gua. Each part is from one of the ba gua, the eight trigram symbols. And the eight ba gua trigrams comes from the combination of either yin or yang. And the yang symbol is a solid line and the yin symbol is a broken line or the two dots. The most popular way to do a I Ching fortune telling is to use coins. That's one way of doing it. And there are many different other ways. I'm going to introduce you one simple way today. And I also have a free PDF download. You can print it out and cut up the Bagua symbols to use it as a divination tool. And check out the download link in the description box below. So here is the basic Bagua, the eight trigrams. And you can see the different combinations of the yin and yang lines. The qian has three solid lines, so it's the most yang. And the quen has three broken lines, so it's the most yin. And the number one qian gua is related to sky. The number two, the dui gua, is related to lake. The number three, li, is related to fire. And the number four, the zhen, is related to thunder. The number five, the shun gua, is related to wind. Number six, kan, is related to water. And number seven, the gen gua, is related to mountain. And the number eight, the quen gua, is related to earth. So those are the basics of the ba gua, the eight trigrams. If you study Chinese metaphysics, you probably memorize all this already. And this is also the basis of the Yi Jing or the Book of Change. So instead of throwing coins, you can use these cards. You can print out two copies and cut out all of them. So you will have two of the Qian Gua, two of the Dui Gua, and two of every one. So totally you have 16 cards. And the reason we want the two of each one because we have upper gua and the lower gua. And we need the two symbol to make one Yi Jing hexagram. So we want to have chance of picking up two of the same cards. You can also print it on a thicker paper so it can last longer or you can even laminate it if you like. After cutting out all the cards, you can shovel them and then mix them up so it's random. And just like any divination, you have to concentrate, think of the questions clearly. You can even write down your question and then start drawing. The first card can be the lower gua and the second card can be upper gua. You can do it in reverse, just keep it consistent. Once you have your two gua number, you can refer to this chart. And it's a very simple chart. You can see the upper gua is on the top from one to eight, and the lower gua is on the right side from one to eight. So any combination will create a new number. And I show the corresponding Yi Jing number here so you can check easily. For example, when you have qian gua as the upper gua and the dui gua as the lower gua, that's the number two. And look at the chart, you know, it's a yi jing number 10. I have the name with the basic translation of the 64 yi jing hexagrams. The name usually give you some suggestions of your answer to your question. But if you want more information, you have to look deeper, maybe search online or find the Yi Jing book. They will show the meaning for different hexagrams. 
and I'm also going to have a book coming out soon about more detailed information of each of the Yi Jing hexagrams. And I try to keep it simple so it's easy to follow for beginners. We just want to learn some information that's related to your question. What's the situation you are facing? Is there any key component you need to pay attention? The purpose of Yi Jing divination is to provide you some perspective so you can see the situation from a different point of view because sometimes we don't see the big picture or we are just missing out some key points. Some people will ask about the changing lines. To come up with changing line with this method, you can just pick one card from the deck and see the number on top. And we count it from the bottom line. For example, if it's number four, we count from the bottom up. The fourth line is a changing line. So the yin will become yang and the yang will become yin. So that will create a new Yi Jing hexagram. And if the number is bigger than six, for example, if it's number eight, after sixth line, you start from the first line on the bottom again. So the eight will become two or the second line from the bottom. So that's how we find out the changing gua to find out the result of your question. And every method has its limit. For this method, you will just have one changing line, unlike using the coins. When you use coins, you can have more changing line or you can have zero changing line. Some people will argue about which method is the best. Some methods will produce more chance of a certain combinations based on mathematics. But I don't think you need to worry so much. I think for the fortune telling or divination, the most important thing is you being sincere and uh, concentrate. It's a connection between your mind and your tool that makes the difference. And the specific tool is not as important. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please find the download link in the description box. Thank you so much and see you next week.